What is up, creator? It's good to see you. This tutorial will show you how to add a killer OBS countdown timer for Halloween. The skills that you will learn during this tutorial is how to apply chroma key, the application of animated shaders, the application of adding a shader that shows a waveform that dances to your music, and setting up a countdown timer that when it reaches zero automatically switches to the scene of your choice. I will also provide access to free assets to build this animation, and this is what you will get. Get some. <laughs> Okay, the first step is to download the only animation used in the countdown for OBS Studio. And that is a video that I made just recently called the Halloween Green Screen Free 1080p Monster Faces with Moving Eyes. It's on a green background, which is perfect for chroma key. You can download it with the program called 4K Downloader at 4kdownload.com. This software is also free. Both the link to the animation and the software can be found in the description. All right. Okay, what about audio tracks that are spooky and cool and 100% uh, CCBY 3.0? In other words, commercial free. Well, I went onto the audio library and did some research for quite a while and found 13 absolutely killer soundtracks that'll be perfect for your OBS countdown for Halloween. Check them out. Here's just a couple examples. Yeah. This one sounds like the Terminator. Check it out. And then finally, you got to have this one. Can you believe this is commercial free on the audio library? I couldn't believe it when I found it. I'll provide a link in the description that'll take you to every one of these 13 songs that I found. <clears throat> okay, the next step is to get the timer up and running. And what we're going to use is something called the countdown timer with optional next scene. Because when it goes to zero, it's going to switch to the scene of your choice. This is a Lua script, and you can just Google Countdown Timer with Optional Next Scene. It'll take you right to the page. I'll also put a link in the description. I also made a video on how to set this up. If you're interested, you can click this link, and it'll take you to that, and you can figure out how to work with all the parameters. But it's really not that difficult. Let's move on. Okay, now we're going to install the two plugins responsible for creating the digital graphics behind the skull. One is OBS Shader Filter version 1.21. And the other one is called OBS Shader Filter Plus. The plus generates the waveform, and the other one creates the fire effect behind the skull. Okay, so we're going to run both of these at the same time and assign them to their appropriate graphics. Okay, go to the Downloads button, click it, and it will download a zip file. Expand the zip file into your Downloads folder, and it will be named OBS-Studio. Okay, open that up and take a look at the contents. Then open up another screen showing the contents of the actual installation folder for OBS Studio on your computer and you'll notice that the structure matches the structure from the zip file. And what you want to do is take the assets out of the subfolders and put them into the appropriate folder on the left for the live installation. Now if you want some more detail on how to manually install a plugin, I made a video that will help you with this. Just click this link right here and you will be good. Okay, we're going to need a shader file for the OBS Shader Filter Plus plugin. So go back to that page and click the GitHub link, and it'll take you to the GitHub page. Scroll down, and you'll see a link with examples. See it there? Click that link, and it'll take you to some shader files. And the one we want to download is the FFT.HLSL. Right-click, Save Link As, and save that to a place that you'll remember. You can put it right in your uh, downloads folder if you'd like. Okay, let's start assembling these things. Okay, we're going to start with creating the fire effect, which is a shader filter. And we're going to assign it to a graphic, okay? So first things first, let's go in and create a new scene. We'll just call it the counter and hit OK. And we're going to drag in a graphic. Let's get that in now. Let's see here. It's a black graphic. It's a ping, but it can be either a ping or a JPEG or even a GIF. Drag it right in. And as you can see, the source has been created. It's called transparent black dot ping. I'm going to right click on this and go into filters and click the plus sign. And I'm going to select the user defined shader plugin. All right. And I'll name this fire. Hit OK. And I'm going to check off both use 
Effect File and Load Shader from File. Hit Browse, and I'm going to select Fire 3 dot effect and hit open and as you can see the fire gets inserted but it doesn't look like what we saw in the demo it's got kind of almost like a bonfire kind of effect we can modify that shape by scrolling down and selecting full width watch this isn't that cool now at this point you can modify this thing to your heart's content um let's see here Flame size, the spark grid height, flame modifier, all kinds of neat stuff. So if, if I increase the flame modifier, the heat of the flame increases, you know, all kinds of really neat effects. Let me make it about that big. And I'll hit a close. Whoops. There we go. I'll hit close. And uh, as you see on mine, because the image is so large, I have a 2000 by 2000 pixel image here. It kind of looks different than what the demo was showing you. All you have to do is modify it by size or by scrolling it around inside this frame just to make sure that it works the way you want it. I think I'm going to shrink it down just a tad just so that I can see the whole thing and I'll stretch it by holding my shift key and holding the little square here and making it full width. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Perfect. Okay, there's your flame. Okay, let's put the spooky skull with moving eyeballs into the source. All you have to do is drag it right in and it drops it in. As you can see, it does have the green screen, so we're going to have to get that masked out. So let's right-click on the filters and hit the plus sign and select chroma key. Hit OK. And because the green color is the default, it should automatically just mask it out. Hit close. The only other thing you really have to worry about is right-clicking it, selecting properties, and making sure that it loops. Otherwise, you know, it'll just stop. It'll just disappear, and you'll be like, what's going on? I don't understand. I broke it. No, it just played out. So if you hit loop, it plays forever. Hit OK. And then, naturally, what you can do is you can uh, change the size of this thing. Now, currently, there's no room for a counter at all or anything else because this, this, the skull's so large. It's going to be hard to, to select it because the fire behind it will automatically select so just click the padlock and lock that layer now you can grab the skull real easily and modify its size to your heart's content i'm going to make it about this big i don't want to lose that fire at the top of his head so i'll make it about like yay size okay creator do you remember the fft.hlsl file that's a shader file and we're going to use it to create the waveforms that dance to the music track so first what we're going to do is we're going to add a soundtrack. I'll drag this one over. It's not the same as the demo because it has a stronger beat, I think, and it demonstrates the movement of the WAV file a little bit better. I'll drag that in. And, of course, it does not give you any audio. You have to click the cog and go to Advanced Audio Properties and go to Monitor and Output. Woo, it's pretty loud. Turn it down a little bit. So there's the file. It does work. Now I'm going to click the cog again. Now I'm going to turn off the audio so that we're not hearing it right now. Okay, so it's still on, but we're not, we're not monitoring it. And it will still affect the waveform. So we've got the track. It's running beautifully. Let's drop in another image so that we can apply the waveform to it. So let's go into my folder, my working folder here. And we're going to drop in another image. It's transparent. It can be anything that you want. GIF, JPEG, any kind of image. We're going to right click on it and go into filters, click the plus, and select shader filter plus, and hit OK. And now we select the fft.hlsl file. So I put that in a specific folder here. There it is. I'll hit open, and boom, it puts it in there. Now, let's click close. So let's, let's make the transparency work for us right now. Let's go back in, right click on the image, filters. Click the plus sign, go into chroma key, hit OK. And we don't want to use green because that would remove the green side. What we want to do is go into custom and select color white. Hit OK. And there we go. I just turned the similarity down a tad so that we can see this thing moving. Hit close. So it's green. How do we make it black? Well, go back in, right click, hit filters. Select the plus line again and go into color correction. Hit OK. And now we can select color black. Hit OK. Hit close. 
and I think the song stopped. So let's go in. Yes, it did. Let's make sure that the song is looping so that we can continue to see the wave file working. So I'll go into properties in the song and click loop and hit OK. And then it's back up. There we go. So let's push this down just a little so we can just see the edge of it. OK, like about like that. And what we're going to do is go hit the plus sign and click image again and select the same image. Hit OK. Now we have two. So all you have to do is grab the handle on the right while holding your shift key and get that image to go in reverse. See that? Look at that. And now we can drag. Now we have two wave files working. Isn't that cool? And you can adjust this accordingly. What we have to do now is we have to duplicate the waveform so that it shows up at the top section. So I'm going to go into the one, one of the waveforms here, highlight it. And I don't know if you realize this, but you can, can copy and paste these things. So I'm going to hit Control C on my computer and then Control V, which will paste it. That'll duplicate it. See there, you can see it's duplicated. Then I'm going to right click it and go into Transform and select Rotate 180. Boom. And I'll put that right in the corner. Now I'll go into that photo and do the same thing. Control C, Control V, which will duplicate it. And uh, I'll flip this one by hitting my shift key. And as you can see, it, it starts to squash a little bit. And I'll just bring it all the way around. And now I have a, a windowed version of the top one. And now I can slide those back up at the top. Now, as you can see now, the waveform is covering the skull head. So I'm going to select both of those two layers in the source area and drag them down below the other two sources. And now it's behind it. I'm telling you, OBS Studio is rocking, man. In regards to manipulating layers in the source window, it's unbeatable. It's just a fantastic thing. So now we're going to add the timer. First, we'll go into sources and click the plus sign. And we will select text GDI. And we will type in counter text. Okay. Hit OK. And we can type anything in the text field. It doesn't really matter because it's going to get replaced by the timer. Now the font. Uh, I installed a pretty cool font. It is called Rapscallion. And it's kind of got this distressed kind of Byzantine kind of look. It's really kind of cool. There's a whole bunch more at a website called fontsquirrel.com. So you can scan through those fonts and download anything you want. I have this one here already installed on my computer. So let's go back into OBS and select it. So ours. Wrap, wrap, wrap. There we go. There it is. Wrap Skillion. And we've got a size of 256. I'm going to make it 300 because it's always better to have it larger. And in regards to the color, let's go down and select gradient. And I'll select, mm, I guess, yellow into red or red into yellow. Hit OK. Select red. Hit OK. Yeah, that's cool. And let's see. I want to continue to scroll down. I want to outline the text. And I want to make that outline black because it's going to be, it needs to be visible on that yellow background with a fire. So I'm going to increase the outline to a pretty decent thickness. That looks good right there. And put that right underneath the skull head. All right. Now we need to go to tools, scripts, and we need to select that countdown redirect script that we have, which is called countdown days Lua. Select that, hit open. And the text source that I want to go to is, let's see, maybe it didn't grab it. So I hit the refresh icon there. Let's see if it grabbed it. There it is, counter text. That's important to know now. If you don't see the text source that you created, you need to hit that little recycle button. Then it shows it up. Now, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to define the time. So the length of the song, in this case, I'll just make it one minute and 30 seconds, okay? And, and then, then you, you select, select the scene. scene. That's important because if you, if you select the scene first, it will immediately count to zero and switch, and it messes everything up. So always des designate time first, then select your scene. In this case, it will be the rocket scene that I've created, and I will hit close. And as you see, it's already counting down. And I'm going to hit the Alt key and... Get rid of those extra zeros and center that by the skull. And we are good to go. Let's turn the sound up a little bit here. Advanced audio properties. 
Danger Snow is the name of it. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, now. I want to tell you that I'm going to make another video right here. If you click it, it's going to be a full demonstration of all the available shader filters that are available for this plugin. There are many, so it's going to give you the effect and how to make the effect real quick so that you get a broad spectrum view of what can be done with this filter. It, it is incredible. incredible. Anyway, best wishes to you. Happy Halloween. I will catch you on the flip side.